Hey, this is Mr. Janes. In this video, we'll be applying right triangle trigonometry to some of the real world problems you see on this page. Specifically, we'll be taking a look at problems 2, 3, 6, and 8. But before we start, it will be helpful to discuss some problem solving strategies. Number one, read the problem carefully, circling important information and underlining the question. Oftentimes, students get these kinds of problems wrong because they don't understand what important information is given, such as lengths or angles, and oftentimes they don't even realize what the question is asking, and so they answer the wrong question. Number two, draw a diagram and label the picture with measurements and variables. Remember to use units, such as feet, inches, meters, degrees, things like that. Two words that will come up fairly often in these kinds of real world problems are angle of elevation and angle of depression. First, angle of elevation. Suppose a person was outside and they were looking straight forward horizontally as represented in this picture by the uh, green person and this blue line here. Next, they look up at an object, perhaps this hot air balloon in yellow right here, uh, with a new sight line. The angle between that straightforward horizontal view and the sight line up to the object, perhaps the hot air balloon in yellow, that's called the angle of elevation. So if I told you there was a 30 degree angle of elevation up to the hot air balloon, you would draw a triangle that looks something like this. So with angle of elevation, that angle is always on the ground looking up. On the other hand, angle of depression has to do with looking down. You would use an angle of depression if you were in an elevated position, maybe in the air, on top of a cliff, on the surface of the water, something like that. And you started by looking straight forward and then looked down at an object. For example, being in a hot air balloon here and looking at uh, this pot of gold here. So if I told you that there was a 30 degree angle of depression from the hot air balloon down to the pot of gold, it would look something like this. So as you can see, an angle of elevation is all about starting on the ground and looking up, elevating, looking up. You can think of, uh, you know, an elevator goes up. Um, an angle of depression is all about starting at the top and looking down, a downward angle. So depression, you can think of being uh, sad or upset, um, that's looking down, depressed. Next, number three. We'll model each situation by labeling the sides with opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, and then writing a trigonometric ratio, such as sine, cosine, or tangent. Next, in number four, we'll solve the ratio either by multiplying and dividing or by using an inverse trigonometric function, such as inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent. Lastly, in number five, we'll answer the question using the proper units, such as meters, feet, miles, or kilometers, and we'll also check to make sure that the answer is reasonable. For example, if I was asking you a question about the height of a building, um, maybe a reasonable height would be you know, 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet, something like that. If you have an answer of 5 million feet, that's way too large, or an answer of one foot, that's way too small. So it'll be important to check that our answer is reasonable. If it's not, we should perhaps go back and check our work. All right, let's actually try and work out some of these problems here. As I mentioned before, I'll be doing two, three, six, and eight, and I encourage you to pause now to try these problems before we do them on the video, or pause as I'm working to try and predict what's going to happen before I actually do it. First, let's look at number two. Number two. A certain jet is capable of a steady 20 degree climb, angle of elevation. How much altitude in meters does the jet gain when it moves one kilometer through the air? I'll start by circling my important information, such as the 20 degree climb and the one kilometer through the air, and underline the question, which is all about how much altitude does that jet gain. Next, I'll draw myself a diagram uh, of this jet moving through the air. So here I have my jet kind of climbing on this diagonal. Up through the air, we'll picture the jet. So they tell me it's a 20 degree climb, angle of elevation. So remembering what we talked about before, angle of elevation means like standing on the ground looking up. So my angle of elevation, those 20 degrees, will be labeled right there on the diagram. And then the problem states it moves one kilometer through the air. Now the jet is actually flying on this diagonal, on this hypotenuse, so I'm gonna label this with one kilometer right here in green. The question is actually asking me how much altitude in meters does the jet gain. So altitude is kind of like a height off of the ground. And so that indicates that this side right here will have to have the variable. 
and so I've put an X on the side that represents the altitude. Remember, number three of our problem solving strategies was all about labeling the sides with hypotenuse opposite and adjacent and then setting up a trig ratio. So let's start by labeling the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the longest side of the right triangle across from the right angle. The opposite side is the side across from the angle that we're working with, in this case the 20 degree angle of elevation. The adjacent side is the side adjacent or next to the angle we're working with, again that 20 degree angle of elevation. Next we need to figure out which trigonomic function to use. If you've forgotten what ratio sine, cosine, and tangent are equal to, you can always write down SOHCAHTOA to help you out. Since the hypotenuse is labeled with one kilometer and the opposite side has our variable x, we will use sine because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We can't use cosine or tangent because those both involve adjacent sides and our adjacent side in our diagram is not labeled with a variable or any sort of length. For the calculations, you may want to use a piece of scrap paper like I'm using here. Since we're using the sine function, we can write that sine of 20 degrees equals x over 1 because x is the length of our opposite side and 1 is the length of our hypotenuse. Using a calculator, we find that sine of 20 is 0 0.3420, rounded to four decimal places. When you're calculating in these problems, you should use at least three decimal places, if not more. Next, we can interpret that 0 0.3420 as a fraction over 1 and multiply. And so, x equals 0 0.3420. But wait, 0 0.3420 what? What units are we using here? Well, the original measurements were in kilometers, so it makes sense that our answer should also be in kilometers. However, it's important to check back with the question. The question asked, how much altitude in meters does the jet gain? And so our final answer should be in meters. To convert from kilometers to meters, remember that there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So, multiplying 0 0.3420 by 1,000 leaves us with 3,420 meters. I'll now remove my calculation sheet. Make sure to write your final answer down on the paper and keep that calculation sheet stapled to the back of this regular worksheet to, so you keep your work with you. I'm going to move a little more quickly on questions 3, 6, and 8. So as you're watching, make sure you're pausing to rewind the video if you need or to predict what happens next to make sure that you're actually learning and understanding what's happening. Here we go. Number 3. A submarine at the surface of the ocean makes an emergency dive its path making an angle of 21 degrees with the surface, an angle of depression. If it goes for 300 meters along its downward path, how deep will it be? What horizontal distance is it from the starting point? I've circled the 21 degree angle of depression as being important and the 300 meters along its downward path. For the question, there's actually two here, which makes this a little tricky. First, they're asking how deep will it be, that submarine, and second, they're asking what horizontal distance is it from a starting point? So actually, this will be two problems in one with two different answers. I've created a diagram and labeled it. Notice that 21 degree angle depression is starting at the water surface and angling downward, depression moving down. And the 300 meters along this downward path is that diagonal, that hypotenuse that, that um, the submarine is taking. The X is the depth. Uh, how deep will it be, that first question? Next, I can label my sides with adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse. Using SOHCAHTOA, we can notice that this is going to be another sine problem because our opposite and our hypotenuse are labeled. We can write sine of 21 degrees equals x over 300. By using the calculator to compute the sine of 21 degrees, we have that 0 0.3584 equals x over 300. After multiplying, we find that the submarine is 107.5 meters deep. Remember, this problem had two parts to it. We'll have to expand our scrap paper and read the question one last time. The second question was, what horizontal distance is it from the starting point? We'll need to put a different variable on the top of the, our diagram at the water level to represent the horizontal distance from the submarine starting point to where it, now looking at y, 21 degrees and a 300 meters, it looks like this is a cosine problem because we have both the adjacent and the hypotenuse, but no longer are working with the opposite side. We now have cosine of 21 degrees equals x over 300, and we can use our calculator to figure out what cosine of 21 degrees is. Turns out that it's 0.9336, and next we can multiply. Finally, we find that x equals 280.1 meters, and that is the distance that uh, the submarine travels along the horizontal surface of that water.
So the tricky part about this problem was the fact that this is really two problems in one. Again, that's why it's important to circle the uh, important information and underline the questions, because who knows, there might be more than one question in just one problem. Let's move on to number six. Number six, at a certain time, eat on your own before you watch the video for these. So pause the video, make sure that you are circling the important information, underlining the question, drawing that diagram, labeling it, writing your trig functions, solving it, and checking to see if your answer makes sense. Pause the video now. I'll start going over it in three, two, make sure you've tried it. Let's take a look at six. Six, at a certain time, a vertical pole three meters tall casts a four meter shadow. What is the angle of elevation of the sun? To me, it seems like the three meters tall and the four meter shadow are pretty important. And the angle of elevation of the sun is the question they're asking. But what is that actually? So here's my diagram. I've got the three meter tall flag, the four meter shadow, and in orange, I've got the angle of elevation of that sun. You might be tempted to put the angle of elevation up top because when you think of the sun, you think of something higher in the sky. But remember, angle of elevation means you're starting on the ground and you're looking up, you're elevating. So the angle of elevation must be on the ground between the shadow and that kind of dotted imaginary line where the sun will be shining. Next, we can label our sides. Uh, the hypotenuse is not given. The three meters represents our opposite side and the four meters is our adjacent side. Referring back to Sokotoa, we notice this is going to be a tangent problem because we have the opposite and the adjacent side but no hypotenuse, so we can't use sine or cosine. So we can write tangent of theta equals three over four. This problem is a little different than some of the previous ones we've seen. Before, we would just take sine or cosine of a certain angle and put that in our calculator to get a decimal. However, in this one, the variable, uh, that theta, is inside the tangent function. So we can't put tangent of theta in the calculator because we don't know what theta is. Instead, we've got to find a way to um, cancel or eliminate that tangent function and just get theta, the variable, by itself. To do that, we'll use an inverse trigonomic function on both sides. The inverse function of tangent is called inverse tangent and looks like tangent to the negative one as a little superscript or uh, almost looks like an exponent, although it's not an exponent. So if we apply that to both sides, the inverse tangent of tangent, those two functions will cancel each other out because they're inverses. This leaves us with just the variable theta on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we'll have to put the inverse tangent of 3 over 4 into our calculator just like that. If you're having trouble doing that, please refer to one of the previous videos on basic trigonometry. We obtain a final answer of 36.9 degrees, and that seems pretty reasonable given the picture I have. That angle in the picture could, looks like it could be about 40 degrees, maybe 36 degrees right there. That, that makes sense to me. Lastly, let's look at 8. A five foot tall student is standing 20 feet away from a building. He uses a device to measure the angle of elevation from his eyes to the top of the building to be a 30 degree angle. How tall is the building? So I noticed that the 20 feet away from the building will be important and that the angle of elevation being 30 degrees will be important. Um, and that it's asking about how tall the building is. That's the question of underlined in orange. But what about this five foot tall student? How will that work into this? The best way to figure it out will be to, to draw the diagram. And so here's my diagram. Turns out that the 30 degree angle of elevation and the 20 foot distance create this triangle. I've highlighted it in purple, but the five feet and the actual height of the building aren't part of that triangle at all. What we need to do is first use the 30 degrees and the 20 feet to solve for X, the opposite side of that right triangle. Since the triangle is floating five feet in the air, once we find x, we'll need to add 5 feet to it to find the total height of the building. Next, let's quickly do the computation to solve for x. We can label our sides with 20 feet as the adjacent and x as the opposite. Since we have the adjacent and the opposite, this will be a tangent problem, so we can write tangent of 30 equals x over 20. Next, just pop the tangent of 30 into the calculator. And we find that the tangent of 30 is 0.5774. And so x is 11.5. But wait, we're not done yet. Since the angle of elevation was taken from the student's eyes, we have to add on the additional five foot height of the student. 11.5 plus five leaves us with a total height of 16.5 feet for the building. As you work to finish the rest of these real world problems, make sure you remember to follow the five problem solving strategies that we talked about in the beginning of this video. Good luck.